Right, with me is uh, Mark Smith, the man in seat 61. Thank you so much again for coming to the Rail Forum. Um, First question, I'm assuming you came here to Vienna, uh, sunny Vienna, by train. What was the journey like? Of of course. I hopped on a morning Eurostar, lunch in Brussels, an afternoon in Cologne, and then the uh, Cologne-Vienna sleeper. And it was a wonderful journey down the Rhine as the evening light fell on the Rhine Valley vineyards and the Lorelei Rock. I can't think of a better journey or a better way to travel to Vienna. Now, um, you've just been on a panel, and uh, one of the questions, uh, which is, I think, quite a tricky question, but it was a question at the end, which said, if there was one thing that you'd like to change which would make a difference very short, over a short period of time, what would it be? Well, I think one niggle, and it's a huge niggle, I spend a lot of my time chasing up issues around this, it's the 90-day booking horizon. We could discuss whether 90 days is enough in in, uh, uh, competition with airlines, but even if the industry could stick to 90 days and enforce what I presume are its contractual rights for infrastructure providers to plan their engineering work and timetable changes in sufficient time to release data and, and release it reliably at the 90 days, I think that will be um, a vast improvement. At the moment, we have bookings for Christmas that don't open until the middle of November or, in some cases, uh, beginning of December. And, of course, by that time, a lot of business has been lost. We see engineering work that means data is incomplete even within the 90 days under normal circumstances. And the question people ask me is, are there really going to be only two trains between Paris and Barcelona in early September? Or are the other two trains going to suddenly appear from nowhere if we wait a a week or two? And I can't tell them. Yes. Now, um, I remember you telling us before um, that there was quite a demand for long-distance travel from the UK by train for various reasons. And um, if I remember rightly, uh, Italy was one of the most popular routes to take. How how has that changed over the last couple of years? Is it still probably the most popular? I think Italy always will be a huge draw for leisure travellers. And budget airline experience is not getting any better. So there is definitely a demand, which I don't think the industry caters for, or or even believes exist, for train travel from the UK to places like Italy and, of course, Spain. Spain is the other uh, big draw. Um, It's a wonderful experience. There's some fantastic scenery and places you can stop off on the way. It's remarkably affordable. The big problem, of course, is finding out about it and, and booking it. That's the bit that isn't easy. In fact, it's the other way around compared to the airlines, isn't it? It's really easy and cheap to book a flight, um, but the experience is awful. The train journey experience is wonderful, but booking it is awful, and we've got to try and make that better. Um, one other thing, we took the journey from Antibes to, um, to Vienna. It was uh, 16, 17 hours altogether in the end. What are the type of questions, because I know what was going through my mind as we were booking it and, and, and looking at how we would do the, the journey, what, what are the biggest questions you get uh, from travellers on, on a longer tr- uh, train journey? What, what is it that maybe they've got a fear factor about? Well, it depends whether we're talking about a, a, a British person, a European, who <laughs> basically understand train travel, even if all the trains they've used have been in their own country, yeah. or whether we're talking about an overseas visitor. Overseas visitors need far more reassurance about how you check in for a train and luggage. They're obsessed with luggage and whether there'll be room for it. Well, of course, we don't worry about it. We know there always is. It's not something we think about. They need to be told, yes, luggage is not a problem. They need to be told that the train goes when it goes. If you're on it, you go with it. If you're not, you get left behind. But they want to know exactly how soon they should be at the station. All that sort of thing that we perhaps take for granted. They're also obsessed with facing forwards. That's something we don't often take into account in, in, in Europe, that they want, they're, they're not used to going backwards. Um, they're also concerned about connections. They don't understand that 10 minutes between a train in Switzerland is actually plenty. In fact, the question, I, the, the answer I normally give is, it'll take you two minutes, what are you going to do for the other eight? Um, so they need lots more reassurance about connections. Now, I guess uh, you're going back home by train again. Of course. And uh, when will that be? I'm going back tomorrow morning. I'm going to be on the 6.52 out of Vienna, Mm -hmm. change at Frankfurt and Brussels, and I will be into London the same day. Vienna to London in a single day.
totally relaxed, I'm sure. Absolutely. I have a good book, and I'm sure I'll be able to get a good vice beer or a bottle of red from the buffet car. <laughs> Mark, thanks again for coming to the Rail Forum and participating on the panel. And um, I wish you a safe trip back and a wonderful evening in Vienna. Thank you.